Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and today I'm going to be showing you how I built a beautiful outdoor table. Some close friends of mine are redoing their backyard and wanted a new outdoor table that would fit their new covered patio space. They wanted a table that was a custom length and asked if I could design and build something for them. I'm partnering with DAP Products today to show you how I built this beautiful custom table. For this project, I used 6 quarter knotty alder which I milled down to size with my miter saw and table saw. I started first with the legs, cutting them down to length and then ripping them down to 3.5 inch width on the table saw. I saved the cutoffs to use for another project. Once the legs were cut and ripped to size, I ran them through my joiner to flatten down the faces of the boards so that they could be glued together without any gaps. With the boards nice and flat, it was time to glue them together to make the chunky legs for the table base. I used DAP Weldwood Original Wood Glue and spread it over the entire face of the board with a silicone brush. I set the second board on top, then clamped them together and set them aside to dry. I repeated these steps for the three remaining legs and let them dry for several hours. In the meantime, I finished milling down the rest of the wood that would make up the entire table. With the glue dry on the legs, I took off the clamps and ran the legs through my joiner to get rid of the glue squeeze out and make sure that everything was squared up nicely. One thing to make sure of is that every leg is run through the joiner the same number of times so that they are all the exact same size. I moved on to the tabletop next, running each of the boards through the joiner to flatten out the edges. I really wanted to do something different with this table and decided to purchase a Festool Domino to help with the assembly. I lined up all of the boards for the tabletop and used a square to mark the location where I would route the mortises for all of the domino tenons. Once the lines were marked, I also marked where the tenons would be routed a bit wider to allow for some play when trying to align the tenons to the mortises as I pieced together the tabletop. Once all of the marks were made, I got to work with the domino routing all of the mortises and the boards. To get started with the glue up, I glued tenons into the first board, adding glue to both the mortise and the domino tenon, then wiping away any excess glue with a towel. Then I added glue to the edges of the boards I was joining together using a silicone brush on one of the boards to evenly spread out the glue. Honestly, this was not very efficient and I quickly realized this would become a disaster as the tabletop got wider and heavier. I quickly pivoted away from that idea and went to work gluing all of the tenons into each of the boards and wiping away the glue. The tenons will go into tighter mortises and then the loose mortises are for when aligning all of the boards. With all of the tenons glued in place, I began the remainder of the glue up, piecing the tabletop together board by board. This process can definitely be done without dominoes and by just using straight glue on the joints or glue in pocket holes. For me, it has always been a struggle to get the wood to line up well during the process, as I'm typically alone, and wood glue tends to start curing faster than anticipated. So for me, the domino was more than worth every penny. Once the boards were fit together, I grabbed some clamps and clamped everything in place and set it aside to dry. While the tabletop was drying, I moved back to the table legs, which needed to be cut down to their final size. The legs are kicked out at 5 degrees, so I cut a 5 degree bevel on each end, making the cuts parallel with each other. Mm -hmm. 
The legs have stretchers on each end that needed to be attached to act as a support. I used one of the apron pieces as a spacer and then marked the location of where the stretcher would go on the legs. I added glue and pilot holes, then drove screws into the legs to act as a temporary hold. I bored out the holes with a 3 8 inch drill bit, approximately 1 half inch deep, and drove 2 and a half inch screws into the holes. I removed the first screws and bored out those holes, adding back the 2 and a half inch screws to secure everything. I filled those holes with 3 8 inch dowels, flush cutting them and sanding it all down smooth afterward. I had planned to add the top frame piece to the legs with domino tenons, but realized I got a little ahead of myself and now could no longer use the tenons with the legs partially assembled. I pulled out my Craig jig and drilled one and a half inch pocket holes into each end of the boards and then clamped and screwed them in place with two and a half inch pocket screws. For the remainder of the table frame, I marked the location for the center cross supports and then marked where the domino mortises would go. I added the mortises to the aprons and the stretchers, added the tenons, and then glued and clamped the whole thing together to dry. On the ends of the apron pieces, I used my multi-mark tool to mark the location where I wanted the tenons to go and made that same mark on the legs, then routed out the mortises for both the aprons and table legs. I made the mortises on the legs tight mortises and the mortises on the aprons loose. Again, this helps with the assembly just in case one of the mortises is just a little off. The loose mortise will literally give you a little bit more wiggle room. Just as with the tabletop, none of this table has to be assembled with domino tenons and you can very easily do this exact same thing using pocket hole joinery. I glued the tenons into the legs and then fit them against the aprons and glued them in place. I clamped it all together and left it to dry, moving over to the other end of the table to finish up the assembly. For the lower supporting stretcher, I pre-drilled holes to attach it with screws. I glued and fit the stretcher in place and temporarily secured it with a screw, then bored out a 3 8 inch hole to fit the screws the same way I did with the stretchers on the legs. I then glued and fit some dowels into the holes and cut them off flush and sanded them smooth. With the table base dry, I took it over to my workbench and used my adaptive cutting system to square up the ends. If you don't have a track saw similar to this, you can always use a flat piece of wood clamped to the tabletop and just flush cut it with a circular saw. I cut the breadboard ends slightly longer than the width of the table and then ran them through the joiner to square up one side, followed up by going over to my table saw and ripping them down to width. I marked the location of my domino mortises on the ends of the table and the breadboard ends and then made tight mortises on the end of the table. On the breadboard ends, I made the three center mortises tight and the remaining mortises loose to allow for wood movement. I glued in all of the tenons and then measured how far the tenons would go into the breadboard ends and marked the halfway point. This will allow me to drill holes for the dowels that will hold the outer tenons in place while still allowing wood movement. 
I applied glue only to the center three tenons and then fit the breadboard ends onto the table. I drilled one quarter inch holes through the tenons on the underside of the table, making sure to not drill the entire way through the breadboard, and then added quarter inch dowels, adding glue to just the remaining half inch so that they would be secured in place. Once the glue was cleaned up, I flush cut all of the dowels and then sanded everything smooth. With the tabletop assembled, I taped off the knots on the underside of the table, flipped it over, and then filled the large knots with epoxy and let it dry overnight. Once the epoxy dried, I sanded everything smooth. I used my adaptive cutting system again to trim off the edges of the breadboard ends flush with the edges of the tabletop. Again, you can achieve, achieve the same thing by using a circular saw and a flat, straight board as a fence. To finish off the table, I stained it in weathered oak stain and then brushed on four coats of Total Boat Halcyon varnish. I use this water-based varnish as it dries completely clear so the weathered oak color does not amber. This table will be completely covered under a patio but I still wanted to make sure to use a good outdoor finish to protect it from any sun that could hit it or any crazy rains that we may have. Once the finish was dry, I drilled and counterbored pilot holes for the screws that would attach the base to the top. I used two and a half inch screws to attach everything together. I'm so happy with how this table turned out and its new owners are very happy as well. You can find the link to the step-by-step -step tutorial as well as the printable plans in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure that you hit my subscribe button so that you can get more plans and tutorials just like this one.